hi and welcome to a new episode of mysteries over drinks my name is des if you're new here if you're not then hi welcome back today's mysteries over drinks is going to be a little bit different so you guys can see i'm already ready so i'm not going to be getting ready with you but i'm going to be telling you about three of the most haunted places in los angeles so if you're ready to have your drink and listen to a mystery um let's just go ahead and start the conversation shall we um i have all my notes on here so that way i can tell you all of the, of the um interesting facts and stuff i'm gonna also be telling you stories about places that a lot of people like i don't feel like when they do like these hauntings they don't necessarily talk about them um so i try to find places that haven't been overdone if that makes sense okay so the first place that i'm going to be telling you guys about is the silent movie theater so if you guys know about movies you would know that um for like the first part of like hollywood like 20s 30s um yeah so 20s 30s uh all movies were silent and obviously motion picture sound had not been introduced in hollywood well, John Hampton opened the silent movie theater in 1942, and that was about uh, 10 to 15 years after motion picture had been introduced to the Hollywood movies. So he started this theater using his own collection of silent films, and he was trying to collect all of these silent films and restore them, because he didn't want them to be destroyed because they were classics and he really had a passion for these and while everybody was moving on to the talkies and stuff um people some people still loved it's kind of like you know we all are into the vintage stuff now and so people still had like a special place in their heart for is there someone walking by oh sorry um they still had a special place in their heart for silent films, so he opened this theater in the hopes that uh, people would still enjoy and he could still do, you know, have this love for silent film and be able to restore them and have other people fall in love with them as well. So Hampton, he like was able to uh, acquire a lot of silent films and he was able to restore quite a few and you know, he had like quite a few thousand in his collection, it is said, but the thing is, is that while he was trying to restore them, he would actually use like toxic chemicals. Um, I don't think it tells me what kind, but he used a lot of toxic chemicals when he was restoring them, and he would do this in his bathtub. And he lived right above the theater, so he would do this in the bathtub right above the theater, while he was trying to save all these films, obviously he was breathing all these toxic chemicals. So he was like doing all he could to restore these films, but he was using the toxic chemicals which would result in nothing good for him. Obviously if you're breathing in toxic chemicals a lot, you're obviously not gonna, uh, you know, live a very long life. Um, or, well, just like, you, you're not gonna be very healthy, obviously it's toxic. So, in the 1970s, Dorothy, John Hampton's wife, and him had announced that he had actually contracted cancer, and it was said that he had contracted cancer because he spent so many hours with all these chemicals trying to restore the silent films, but lo and behold, Hampton actually did live until about 1990. Um, it doesn't give me an exact date, but he lived until 1990, so he had, you know, a while, which is good. Um, so the theater actually had closed down for a little bit, but it reopened in 1991, and it was under a new owner. His name was Lawrence Austin, but something bad happened again. So, um... In 1996, Austin was the target of a murder plot. So, 
it was kind of weird. It just seemed like the silent theater was kind of plagued with tragedies, if you will. But he was going to be, apparently people were planning to murder Austin. And so his live-in companion and theater projectionist, James Van Sickle, also a beneficiary, beneficiary of the theater corporation, was the one who came up with this plot. And he's the one that conspired this whole thing against Austin. So later that year, Austin was shot and killed on January 17th, 1997. He was shot in the lobby by 19 year old uh, Christian Rodriguez. First of all, the first owner, John Hampton, is said to haunt the uh, overhead um, apartments area, obviously where he was, you know, restoring the films and stuff. Um, and that used to be him and Dorothy's apartment, so it makes sense that he would still be there. Obviously, it was his home. Uh, it's said that Austin also haunts the theater and he is usually in the lobby and it is said that he kind of confuses a lot of employees and a lot of people especially if like the employees are there after hours they'll see him walking back and forth the late 90s after austin died charlie lessman actually came to be the owner of the silent movie theater and he reopened the silent movie theater for halloween on halloween night in 1999 he said that john hampton had actually come to speak with him it doesn't say what he told him but apparently it caused charlie to reopen the uh, theater for that night he was on his way to get a sandwich and john hampton spoke to him so maybe he asked them to open the theater for one more night i don't know but if you guys are ever in the area, the silent movie theater is in, is at 611 North Fairfax Avenue. So it's like right in like, I guess it's even touristy, but I have walked past it. I haven't been in the silent movie theater, but I've seen it in real life. It's really pretty. So if you guys want to take a look and see if you can see some ghostly apparitions through the windows and you're in the Los Angeles area without having to travel, or if you're going to travel, do it safely. Um, go check it out okay so up next is one of my favorite haunting stories so you guys probably have seen madame tussauds um wax museum not wax museum in on hollywood boulevard it's like right there they always get you because they're always outside and they're like trying to give you tickets and you don't even know what you're taking but you take it and then you end up in a line and you end up paying a lot for whatever but anyway this is not madame tussauds this is the original hollywood wax museum now this one is located on 6767 hollywood boulevard so this one's just called hollywood wax museum and it's really cool on the outside i don't know it has like king kong and it's just it's a really interesting building so the hollywood wax museum was opened in 1965 and it was um, one of the very first like wax museums. It held a lot of realistic uh, figures and a lot of visitors come to see lifelike figures. A lot of visitors come to see if it's truly haunted, but this one also has like a chamber of horrors. And this one is really cool because it has like Chucky, Jason, Nightmare on Elm Street, all those kinds of things. So if you're into like classic um, horror movies, it's definitely a place where you should go. So, um, you know, it's visited a lot and I think it's still open. Obviously not right now, but I think it's still open. I know that there was one in Anaheim that was in Madame Tussauds. But, um, I think that one closed. But I think Hollywood Wax Museum is still open. I went a few years back. It was really fun, and I would definitely recommend whenever we're allowed back into museums. I honestly don't know what's going on. <laughs> I just stay in my house. So, 
The legends are that in the middle of the night, there are obviously all these wax music, wax figures and they come to life all over again and they move around and they, you know, they dance and stuff. When you go to the wax museum, you kind of expect, you know, lifeless figures that aren't gonna move or spook you, but not here. It is said that these figures come to life, whether people are there or not, and they kind of just like grab you, you feel a hand in the back of your head, or not in the back of your head, but you can feel like a tap, or if you stay there long enough, you'll see them move around. Um, so a lot of people have said that some strange things have happened in the wax museum, including their general manager. He said that they did have a couple seances there and that on two different occasions, they feel like this site does have a lot of spirit energy. Um, when people take pictures at night, it is said that they can see like weird lights in their photos or just like strange things will appear in their photos, especially at night. There's also this story about this journalist who is from the National Enquirer, and he was like, I'm gonna lock myself in the wax museum, and I just wanna see if this is real. Um, so he locks himself in the wax museum, and he's gonna stay the night. It is said when morning came, they came to unlock the door, obviously, to let him out. He was kind of crouched over in the corner, and um, he left. He, like, ran out as soon as they opened the door, and he was never heard from again. So he never went back to the National Enquirer, and he never, I guess, like, obviously, he wasn't going to come back to the Wax Museum, but nobody's ever seen this man again. Um, a lot of people do say that this wax museum is just like very strange because it's like super realistic and um, it's just scary when you're in there. It's, it's kind of strange. Like you see these wax figures and they're so lifelike but they're just lifeless if that makes sense. Frozen in time. Um, but yeah, so if you are ever in the area definitely check out the Hollywood Wax Museum. I'm pretty sure it's still open. Um, if not, I'm sorry. Check out Madame Tussauds. It's just as creepy, I think. Only this one's a little bit more realistic. And last but not least, one of my favorite places in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, and it is on the Sunset Boulevard. Um, this location is at 8221 Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, and it is the Chateau Marmo. I went here once, and I remember that it cost a whole lot of money to stay there for one night. Um, I think it was like $600 for probably the smallest hotel room ever, but I had an obsession with LA, I still do. I had an obsession for old Hollywood. I had an obsession with Lana Del Rey. And when I was younger, um, you know, she filmed some music videos there. Um, I just wanted to be in the area. I got a picture of like the, like the swimming pool area. It was really fun. It was really fun. You guys should try it. But uh, you can only go into this hotel if you have a room there. It's not open to the public. It's not like the Hollywood Roosevelt where you can kind of just walk in and walk out. Um, you do have to have a room. Um, so if you have an extra $600 or a special location, definitely check out the Chateau Marmo. Um, it is known to be a place to kind of hide celebrities so you can't really film, you can't take pictures. Um, it's interesting. It's, a, it's like, like a whole other world. You're kind of like secluded off, but it's really fun. It's really just, I don't know, it's super fun. Um, so the Chateau Marmot opened in 1929 and it was like supposed to be like an exclusive, elegant, luxury apartment building. But later during the depression, because the rent was so high and it was so luxurious, they had to uh, convert it to a hotel. And during World War II, it served as an air raid shelter for residents in the surrounding area. And it is also known to be a long-term and short-term residence for a lot of celebrities. 
so it has a lot of history it has a lot of like different things going on in quite some time so you would assume there's some unrest so some of the stories are that they hear like people walking back and forth when there's nobody there employees report windows and doors opening and closing um there's voices and just strange noises and feelings of being watched this is both by employees and guests um there's even apparitions of floating heads so like if you look out the window you might see a floating head i don't know whose head it is but it is said that it's there um so on march 5th 1982 in bungalow 3 it's probably one of the most famous situations or stories that has happened here uh john belushi was found dead at the age of 33 he was pronounced dead of an overdose so today in bungalow 3 guests have said that they uh feel watched especially when they're looking in the bathroom mirror um one couple said that their son stayed awake all night talking to someone called the funny man and so the story goes these people kind of had moved into bungalow 3 as like a a short-term residence and um this little boy would just like stay up all night talking to somebody and laughing like it was just hilarious whatever was going on and he would tell his parents it's the funny man a couple of years later once they move out she was kind of looking at a picture book of um people that had stayed at the chateau marmot and they see this picture of john belushi and the little boy comes up to his mom and he's like oh look it's the funny man so there's that um I definitely believe that story because kids are very receptive to supernatural things and I think that's very plausible. And last but not least, one of the hotel room's most haunted rooms. I'm not sure why it's the most haunted room. I wasn't able to find any like stories or like what happened in there, but the hotel's most haunted room is room 79 and you know, employees will tell you to stay away from room 79. But anyway, some people um, have said that there's like just really strange noises. The furniture moves around in this room. This man who was writing a book was staying in the room and um, he said that he heard a party happening. So he goes out to his window. It's like the dead of night even for Los Angeles apparently there was no party and he realized that the noises were actually coming from inside his room so there's that um there's also the story of the creator or angela bassett bassett of american horror story staying at the chateau marmot and she called the front desk in the middle of the night to be like did somebody come in and clean my room in the middle of the night and obviously they said no um but yeah so like I said, the chateau isn't open to the public. You can't just like walk in, walk out, and look at it because um, it's very secretive. But if you have the means to stay at the hotel there, if you have the means to stay at the Chateau Marmot, I would definitely recommend it. I stayed there once. Um, I didn't get to see any ghosts or experience anything, but that could have just been because I was too busy um, not paying attention to that. Who knows? Um, Alright, so that's all I have for you today on this episode of Mysteries Over Drinks. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. And I'll see you guys in the next installment of Mysteries Over Drinks. Bye!